Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, folks, another one bites the dust. This cultural shift, folks. All of these companies have tried to force the woke, but in business, I mean, frankly, in life, you cannot force something that is deeply unpopular. Eventually, you're going to realize that it's completely unsustainable. A couple days ago, we covered the story that the Obamas had their podcast deal with Spotify canceled, and then lo and behold, a couple days later, Royal UK Twat pre Prince Harry and his entitled wife Meghan Markle just got their Netflix series cancelled. As the cultural pendulum continues to swing and it swings by force folks, the woke business model is absolutely unsustainable and even though Netflix wants to push Meghan Markle feminist garbage TV shows where multi-millionaire married into royalty, technically considered a princess Meghan Markle, wants to push grievance politics and talk about how oppressed she is while literally being one of the most privileged people on earth, even though Netflix wants wants to push that stuff, these companies are realizing there's just no market for it, and the moment their profits are threatened, guess what's first to go and first to get cancelled? Of course, the woke garbage. So of course, let me show you guys exactly what's going on here, but before we get into any of it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible, we are still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm hidden from non-subscribed viewers. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. Alright folks, take a look at the headline right over here. Netflix cancels Meghan Markle's series as streaming platform nosedives to be declared the worst performing stock in the S&P 500 this year. Amid a devastating past week for Netflix, the streaming service giant cancelled an animated series created by Meghan Markle and Elton John's husband, David Furnish. Deadline reported on Sunday, Netflix has quietly dropped Pearl, the working title of an animated series that was created by Meghan Markle through Archwell Productions. The shingle The Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry set up at Netflix in fall of 2020 to create scripted series, docu-series, documentaries, features, and children's programming. And that right there, folks, is not a coincidence. It's not an accident. What they literally mean is children's programming to program children. The project was still in the development stage when it was dropped by Netflix. Netflix announced Pearl in July 2021, described as a family-focused animated series that revolves around the adventures of a 12-year-old girl who is inspired by influential women in history. Like many girls her age, our heroine, Pearl, is on a journey of self-discovery as she tries to overcome life's daily challenges. Markle said in a 2021 statement, I'm thrilled that Archwell Productions partnered with the powerhouse platform of Netflix, and these incredible producers will together bring you this new animated series which celebrates extraordinary women throughout history. Markle and her husband, Prince Harry, signed a deal with Netflix to offer original programming such as documentaries, features, and scripted shows. The New York Times reported that the deal was estimated to be in the neighborhood of $100 million. Last week, Netflix canceled two other animated series for children that were in production, Dino Daycare, and Boons and Curses. Netflix has faced challenges in 2022. Fortune reported for the first time in a decade, Netflix has lost subscribers, shedding 200,000 users last quarter. The company announced in its earning report this week, Netflix stock dropped nearly 38% on the news. Year to date, Netflix stock has nosedived by more than 68%. Netflix is the worst performing stock in the S&P 500 this year, according to the New York Times. Bank of America analyst Nat Schindler says that things may get worse worse for Netflix before they get better. Schindler says that Netflix's plan to reignite its growth story won't have a noticeable impact until 2024, giving investors little reason to be excited about the stock in the interim. Netflix also fired around 25 employees on Thursday, and Vulture reported that the streaming service told staffers at its editorial branch, reportedly without warning, that they were being fired. And there you have it, folks. What this truly is is the woke, liberal, elitist business model. It just doesn't work. Netflix is surprised that they're not putting out quality content Content. Netflix is surprised that their investments aren't paying off after investing a hundred million dollars in Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, and Elton John's husband. I mean, let's just say hypothetically I had a hundred million dollars and somebody was to come to me saying, invest your hundred million dollars into my new project. And then I would, of course, question, well, what's this new project? And they told me, well, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, two of the most hated people on the planet, who continue to get these deals with other companies like Spotify, for instance, and then produce absolutely nothing for you years after being paid 18 million British pounds, not to mention the very unpalatable grievance feminist politics that comes out of Meghan Markle's mouth. And Prince Harry, well, I mean, there's just really nothing there now, is there? But if somebody was to tell me to invest a hundred million dollars into these two, and then Elton John's husband, I would probably respond with something like, you are out of your damn mind if you think you're getting a penny for this project. And this is what I mean by woke elitist liberal entertainment. It's not a meritocracy. It's not who's making the best content, who has the 
the best screenplay, the best idea. It's who do you know, who are you connected to, which leads you to just magically and miraculously score hundred million dollar contracts with no talent and with just some vague idea like we're gonna make kids shows pushing modern feminism. I mean, it's just too easy. You don't need a script, no screenplay, no concept art, no previous experience within the domain, just fame and pushing grievance ideology politics. You're hired. It's absolutely stupid and these companies are wondering why they're tanking beyond belief. The world of entertainment is supposed to be about entertaining, quality content, but it's become focused on left-wing political propaganda messaging campaigns, and the craziest part, using the most unlikable characters you could possibly imagine to push that message. Meghan Markle, a TV actress who's been in a couple TV shows, marries low IQ Prince Harry, and then magically becomes the most sought-after producer and content creator that all the big-name companies are chasing. What an absolutely trash business model. And it's the same people that want to lecture you about grievance politics and privilege. I mean, give me a break. The fact that we have top CEOs running these massive companies, being paid millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to make these kinds of decisions is just wild to me. I mean, going back to the Twitter story we covered a couple days ago, paying Mrs. Vijaya $17 million a year to ruin the platform, it's something we see across left-wing businesses and organizations. People getting promoted to positions of power based purely off political ideology, gender, you name it, and people seemingly failing upwards, continuing to make absolutely terrible business decisions, being guided by woke identity intersectionality politics, actively sabotaging the companies that they work for, and then being promoted to positions of power in executive positions with a track record or a resume of failure. It's absolute lunacy. Nobody wants woke politics or garbage content based off of or produced by liberal elitists with no real talent or with no real interesting story just because they're in the woke Washington, Hollywood, and New York crowd. Here's actually a great example. Sales of Jill Biden's biography are embarrassingly low. Twitter users react, quote, her husband is the most popular president in American history. You might not have known this because you're probably busy being a normal person and living your normal life, but Joe Biden's wife, Jill Biden, releases a biography of her incredibly interesting life. And by incredibly interesting, I mean an absolute snooze fest that nobody gives a crap about. And would you look at that? Her book sold 250 copies in the first week. Once again, who's working at these publishing companies making these decisions that writing a Jill Biden biography is a good idea? I mean, who wants that? Who wants to turn on the TV and watch TV produced by Meghan Markle and Prince Harry and Elton John's husband? And who wants to read a book about Jill Biden's life? The entertainment industry has been totally corrupted. It's been corrupted by politics, and I mean directly corrupted by politics. Here's a great example. Disney executive who helped craft companies response to Florida's parental rights law quits after just three months, replaced by former political aide to Obama, Clinton, and Biden. These massive companies are directly connected to Washington Democrats, and they continue to try to propagandize the entertainment industry for political purposes and political gain, for indoctrination purposes. That's why they're so focused on targeting your kids with kids' TV shows, as we saw with Meghan Markle and obviously Disney. I mean, speaks for itself. And in the end, who is really surprised that it's failing? Nobody wants this stuff, and it's only a matter of time before the free market does what it does best, and that's purging garbage products. That's what I got for you guys, though. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.